Hello Jaspersoft users. Today we're going to show you the basics of building a report in Jaspersoft Studio. We'll walk you through Jaspersoft Studio's design environment, how to connect to a data source, how to use Studio to build a simple report, and how to run and export that report. Let's have a look. Here we see the Studio's default Eclipse environment with a sample report. At the top left, we have the repository and project explorers, where the contents of the Jasper Reports server and connected data sources can be seen. In the bottom left, we can see the outline where the report's XML-based hierarchy can be navigated. In the top right of the studio is the palette, where all of the different types of elements are available to add to a report. The bottom right is the properties dialog. When an element is selected, its various options can be set here. Now that we've taken a look at the studio, let's use it to quickly build our first report. By selecting File, New, and then selecting the Jasper Report option, we can open up the New Report Wizard. Next, we select a template for our report. There are many options here. Built-in templates to get you started quickly, blank templates for full customization, and custom templates so you can more easily create reports to your own specifications. I'm going to select one of the built-in templates, Simple Blue, and click Next. On this screen, we'll see the various project folders used to organize the reports. I'm going to choose this My First Report folder, and down here I'll name the new file My First Report and click Next. Now we've arrived at the Data Source section of the wizard. Here we can choose a data adapter or create a new one. For this tutorial, I'm going to stick with the sample data built into Jaspersoft. We can now see that the data adapter is set to Sample Data, and the window now displays the various tables I have access to. I've got a table here called Orders, which lists imagined IDs, destinations, shipping dates, and other information. I'll write a quick SQL statement to use that table. On the following screen, I can see the columns in this table. I want to use order ID, freight, employee ID, and some other shipping information. This screen has the option to group my fields, but in this case, I'm going to skip that. Now I can hit finish and start configuring my report. Now we're in the studio with our template in the design space. This template is broken out into several sections called bands, which contain elements that make up the report's contents. Different bands behave in different ways according to the rules set for them. With them, we can closely tailor what our reports will look like. First is the title, which will appear on the first page of the report with a static text field for the title and another for a description. Next is the header band, populated with the names of the columns from the database, which will print at the top of each page in the report so we'll know what fields we're looking at. The next section, the detail band, is where the real body of the report is and is populated by expressions that will pull the data from the database and print out each new row. Below this is a page footer, which contains another expression that will display the page number as well as the date. To set up my report, I first want to get rid of a field. I've realized I don't really want to know which employee is tied to a given order, so I'm going to right-click on the field and its associated header and delete them. Now, I've got this big gap between order ID and the rest of the fields. What I'll do is move freight and its header over, but instead of moving the other fields, I want to expand the ship name field to keep it from getting too cluttered. I can click on it, grab it, and then use the auto align to snap it into place. Next, I want to modify this freight field. Right now, if I run this report, it will display a number with a long string of decimals after it. And this report is really just to give a general idea of how big each order was. When I navigate to the text field tab in the properties dialog and click on the edit button, Jaspersoft Studio will open up the expression editor. This tool lets users quickly build up expressions with available functions and variables to dynamically populate text fields based on the conditions of the report. To remove our decimals, I can simply transform this into an integer by first highlighting the current expression, selecting the field from those listed, and then double-clicking the int value function from the list on the right. This will transform the expression. If I wanted to do something like give it a unit, I can type a plus sign, enter a quotation, and enter kg as a unit to concatenate that onto each instance of the number. Now that I have the expression I want, I can click finish. We're almost done here, but there are a few more things I want to clean up beforehand. First, I should change these column headers. I can just double click on the fields to rename them to something a little more readable. Then I can add a quick description and a new title to give some context to it. I think that about does it. Let's have a preview of what this report will look like when it's exported so we can check for any mistakes. Just below the design space, there are three tabs. I want to open the preview tab. This will quickly run the report as it is so I can get an idea of what it will look like as well as how long it takes to compile. We can see how the template from earlier lines up to the finished report, with the title band displaying static text on the first page, the column header band on each page showing us the static column names, the detail band with its expressions now rendered as values from the data set, and the page footer rendering the page number and the date at the bottom of each page. This report looks just fine to me, so now it's time to save it. At the top of the preview space, there's an export button. 
and opening the dropdown shows us a list of file options available in Jaspersoft Studio. A PDF works just fine for me, so I'll choose that, select a destination, and export it. Now if I open that file up, we can see my report has been successfully rendered as a PDF. Let's do a quick recap of what we saw here today. First, we took a tour of the studio design environment. Then, we walked through the steps of connecting to a data source while creating a new report. Next, we added and configured the report elements to refine it to the document we wanted. Finally, we previewed that report to check for errors and then exported it to a PDF file. That report won't be too helpful though if it doesn't get to the people who need to see it. If you want to learn how to schedule and deliver reports, you can click on the link in the video description to see our tutorial. Or, if you want to explore the full depth of Jaspersoft Studio's capabilities, this video is just the first in a series on the topic, which is also linked. Additionally, this video is a part of our Quick Start Guide, meant to get new users up to speed fast. We've also added a link to that, so you can check it out. From all of us here at TIBCO, thanks for watching.